quick because I, I, th I think I uh, took a lot of time trying to set this up. So um, the presentation that I kind of wanted to talk through these slides was uh, learning the internet and students, a rope of sand. Um, just because you, a lot of times th these, these kids have grown up with technology. They've grown up with uh, the internet and it's always been at their disposal. They never had to be an immigrant to this type of thing. Uh, they're, they're all digital natives, especially um, the kids that are in our classrooms right now. This is the worst technology they're ever gonna have is the devices that are in their hands right now. So when we are online, we are kind of all we we've kind of all developed this digital collective consciousness where we are all contributing to one kind of like hive mind and if you really think about it anything that you see posted online um it's kind of all contributed it, it it's makes it, it's been given multiple copies of itself so multiple people are viewing it at one time uh we have infinite uh abilities to publish anything that we want online and you know, it kind of leads to the point where we're, we're talking about if one thing is repeated over and over again online, take for instance this example of this band Nickelback, um, you know, if something is repeated over and over again, it begins to kind of like generate its own digital legs and it generates staying power online even if the original thing kind of doesn't really have much clout anymore. So. Um, Nickelback is a band, and they've had a lot of, <laughs> you guys have probably heard of this band, they've had a lot of, you know, top 10 hits uh, across, I think, dating back to maybe 2006 and, and, and before that, but they're largely online, they are the, the most hated band, I think, in existence. You know, if you do a quick Google, you know, autocomplete is, you know, why does... And then it auto completes to everyone hate Nickelback, and there's it's been kind of the status of the internet to hate on uh, this this band, whether it be from celebrities or if there's memes generated, um, it's kind of gotten digital legs and it's had staying power. And now it's it's gotten to the point where you mention Nickelback, and people just automatically assume that the music is bad. And I think that that's important to think about because students they do not have the digital skills at least initially to discern what is correct information and what is just someone's opinion right so this also happened for uh this is some time ago in our election here in the states i'm sure you guys in the uk are getting a kick out of what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow but um this actually happened ted cruz is one of our republican candidates and he was speaking live and he had something on his face and he just kind of sucked it back into his mouth, not a big deal. But it turned out that the Google searches went from legitimate search queries about, you know, Donald Trump's uh, university, a couple other superflu superfluous items to uh, Ted Cruz kind of got to the point where he was being auto-completed on, on Google to mouth and booger. <laughs> so the internet does have this collective hive mind where if enough of, the, of us are thinking one thing and talking about one thing, uh, it kind of generates its own staying power and that and that s those type of search queries they they end up at the top of Google autocomplete um, searches so you're not really getting real information you're just getting what most people are talking about so I type this in today who do and the first thing that pops up is who do I vote for in Google um, when we have a search engine like this that, that students are just akin to using all the time that they've, they've grown up with this, in a world where Google auto-completes our thoughts for us, students need to be digital hunter-gatherers. They don't have, they need to be able to discern real information from kind of generated information for them. I mean, a lot of the time they're using these devices to think for them, where it really should be the other way around. We are thinking critically and generating our own questions and these devices should be helping us get there not completing the task for us and then the, here's something that you probably see all the time also if you're a member of any social media uh if you have a uh, an account on any of these these are, these are from facebook uh rampant reposting of just false information this has popped up a number of times for me on facebook you know that they're going to begin charging users 2.99 a month and adults that i respect repost this type of thing you know News that is obviously fake. Betty White is still alive. Okay, she's she is past 92. She's still kicking. I believe she's still on TV. This is not the new CEO of Apple. This is just some guy. And if you look at the link, it says NewYorkTimes.com.clonezone.link. Okay, that the, these are not real legitimate websites, but at first glance, um, they would appear to be. 
This is also fake. Uh, USA Today has d actually had to run a retraction because they thought they reported on this as, as if it was real. No, there are no shoe holsters for selfie cams on phones. <laughs> You know, and President Obama did not finish a deal to get every American a free parrot. And the more that we contribute to this ignorance, the more that we willingly, you know, just adhere or subscribe to the fact that whatever we see posted online, and it's, kids are watching, they see adults doing this, they think that the first thing they see reposted on their social media is truth also. They're not really digging, they're not really being taught to hunt. Um, this is an awesome person on Twitter if you want to follow her, Jody Mann, and she, she wrote in the Huffington Post a great article, but I pulled this out of it because I believe it was very, very important. Um, the enlightened generation users treat the web as a service to promote personal and collective well-being, allowing for a global shift of mindless users to mindful consumers of information. We want to teach our kids to be mindful consumers instead of just mindlessly clicking and reposting and retweeting and resharing information as they see it in rapid fire. So you could log on to Instagram and follow people like this, the Kardashians. You, you, you could, but there are a multitude of social media accounts that promote the good in thinking and in practice. Seek the Truth is one. There's almost 400,000 followers, and they post things like this, real stories of, of people going around and doing good. Um, world, this world championship bop, boxer, Manny Picado, um, I actually don't know how to pronounce his last name, excuse me, for being ignorant <laughs> um, of that fact. He builds a hundred, build a thousand homes for, for, for poor Filipino families. Another account is High Consciousness, over, over 180,000 followers. And they just post positive things. You know, if you see something beautiful in someone, speak it. We want to promote the positive here instead of just having the negative, the falsified, um, overtake the digital landscape. So I think in our role as teachers, we need to model this behavior. We need to be responsible as educators. Um, we need to kind of, this needs to be in our teaching repertoire. This needs to kind of be infused in all of our practice because more and more we, when we uh, go to these one-to-one -one atmospheres, um, this needs to be taught on a daily basis. Things like Google Scholar where it's just gonna discern all those different results and only give you results that are articles inclu including peer-reviewed ones or books. You know, photos for class, instead of just using Google image search, these are properly attributed Creative Commons allowable photos in, in uh, for your presentations. And, you know, just teach your kids to be good digital citizens. You know, if you, if you Google my name or if you type in Dan Koch teacher, you're going to get a deliberate digital footprint or a digital tattoo of all my stuff online. And I've this is on purpose. I tell students this all the time. I have a personal Twitter, a, a professional Twitter that I use just for teaching, and the the search results you're going to get are all positive. So if you ask a student uh, what, what, what would happen if I Googled you, a lot of times you'll get a cringy face. Um, so that's your first indication that they need a little bit of guidance there. So, you know, I'll quote Kevin, Kevin Honeycutt at, at the end of my presentation here. I probably went over. I apologize for that. Uh, but the web and technology have set out an amazing buffet of teaching and learning tools. And for the most part, we're eating the napkins. Um, Let's go beyond eating the napkins. Let's take these tools. Let's drive digital literacy. Let's change these these media narratives, and, and let's teach our kids to be digital uh, hunter gatherers. So, I want to thank you guys for having me um, for this presentation. I, I I apologize if I if I went long, um, but I really enjoyed this uh, this opportunity, and um, I hope that if you missed the broadcast, you'll be able to kind of go back in the archives and play this on YouTube uh, because it'll just be published to my channel soon. So thanks again, and uh, thank you uh, for inviting me.